Get ready for a scorching hot summer lineup at View this July. Peter Parker goes back to school in youthful superhero flick Spider-Man Homecoming. The battle for Earth comes to a head in war for the planet of the apes. NT Live brings sold out multi-award winning play Angels in America to the big screen. Christopher Nolan recreates a pivotal World War II operation in Dunkirk. And Cars 3 sees Lightning McQueen hitting the comeback circuit. Hello, I'm Stefan. I'm Rihanna. And welcome to Views What to Watch this month as we run through the biggest and best films coming to a big screen near you in July. And first up is Spider-Man Homecoming. Someone is collecting stuff from Avengers battles and building these crazy weapons. This is my chance to prove myself. So now we're seeing Spider-Man mix it with the MCU, which obviously we have seen already, mm -hmm. but this is going to be the first standalone film. Yeah. So what are we expecting from this sort of Sony MCU collaboration? Well, we've seen a really nice taster of it already in Captain America Civil War. And Tom Holland, who is playing Peter Parker Spider-Man, and he's so perfect for this role because he is young and he is a little bit geeky. He actually went to a high school in America undercover. Do you know him too? His mentor in the film is Robert Downey Jr, Iron Man. Um, I think that's going to be a really, really nice relationship. I love the way that Tom Holland, uh, Spider-Man, because he's coming in, he's a younger version of the character. Mm -hmm. It means he looks at the kind of Avengers in the same way that we do. He's almost like a fan of them, isn't he? Yeah. So I think he's quite a relatable superhero on that front. I was just trying to be like you. I wanted you to be better. Also, the villain in this is going to be Michael Keaton. So he's played Birdman, he's played Batman, and now he's playing another winged creature. How did they persuade him to put on another the bird The vulture! Out? No. I know! So th there's no obligation here for John Watts to set the character up. We've, we've done that in the, in, when we've seen uh, Tom Holland play Spider-Man already. So we don't need to worry about the whole, how did he become Spider-Man? Did he get bit by a spider? Did there was some explosion in some laboratory? We can just dive straight into the action, which is so much better. And another huge franchise, which is sadly coming to an end, it is War for the Planet of the Apes. We are not savages. Apes fight only to survive. Now, I've heard rumours that War for the Planet of the Apes is the best of the trilogy so far. What do you reckon? Oh, I think it's definitely going to be. I mean, the first one, they, there was the dawn and then the rise and now the war. Now, let's be honest, on the big screen, war is definitely the most engaging aspect of the three. And this is such a traditionalist war movie that really studies the kind of uh, human condition, but obviously not just humans, but uh, apes as well. No one really wants to fight, but you do have these kind of warmongers. The main one, played by Woody Harrelson, is kind of channeling his uh, inner Marlon Brando in this movie. And it's really about him up against Caesar. You're him. You're Caesar. If there's one thing that we can rely on with Andy Serkis is that he can do motion capture incredibly well and, and really embody the ape, Caesar. Uh, and he's gone on a real journey throughout these movies. Okay. Matt Reeves, who did um, Cloverfield and also is going to do The Batman. He is a really excellent visual director and I think this is going to be bigger and better and darker and grittier than we have ever seen this franchise before and that is really difficult to do. And it gives us a lot of hope for Batman as well. Yes, it does. Exciting. Uh, but next up we have Angels in America. What? Legion number one. So this is being broadcast live from National Theatre. This has been an incredibly popular uh, stage show that has sold out so quickly. Why should people come and see it on the big screen? Well, first of all, it's got uh, an old Spider-Man alumni in it, Andrew Garfield. Uh, and he is playing a character who um, discovers that he's got AIDS. This is set in New York during the 80s at the height of the AIDS epidemic. It's a really wonderful, moving, I mean, beautiful play to watch. The neon lights are incredible. The stage production is amazing. And it's so rare that you'd get to see this on a big screen, seeing all those intimate facial movements of people people like Andrew Garfield, I mean, it's going to be insanely good. As we mentioned, it's in two parts. It's quite lengthy, but at the same time, that really allows this story to, to kind of develop over time. And maybe perhaps more akin to, say, a sort of TV drama series? Yeah, I think that's a really nice way of putting it because you do fall in love with these characters over this two-parter. So the first one is being live streamed on the 20th of July and the second one is going to be on the 27th. And if you've seen the first, there is no way you'll want to miss the second one. And it sounds like you might need to take your tissues for this one because yes, it's a bit are. of a tearjerker. Uh, from one emotionally charged drama to the next, and it's time for Chris Nolan's Dunkirk. We shall go on to the end. 
we shall never surrender. So Chris Nolan is bringing us a war epic. Are you excited? Oh, I am. And the fact that he can make the Batman trilogy incredibly human. To see him sort of tackle a very real, very haunting uh, real life story of 400,000 soldiers who were sort of stranded and desperate to be rescued, mm. it's got so much potential. Uh, and what a cast he's assembled. I mean, oh my God. Tom Hardy's in there. Yeah. Harry Styles. You excited about Harry Styles? <laughs> He looks like he's going to be really good in it. He actually he does, does. actually. Killian Murphy as well, which is a Nolan favourite. Um, and what I'm really excited about is that Nolan is telling this in a kind of triptych. So he's telling it from the land, from the skies and from the sea. So we have Mark Rylance in a boat. You know where we're going? Into war, George. So, uh, you know, he's really considered the best way to tell this story that isn't going to be like every other war film that we've seen. I mean, if there's one thing you can guarantee, though, with Chris Nolan, is that even though if he is doing something a bit more traditional narrative-wise, Mm -hmm. he's still going to do it in his own unique sort of way and uh, sort of maintain his sensibility as a filmmaker, which is always, always a good thing. And he's teamed up with Hans Zimmer again. Oh my God. It's going to be a wonderful It's a winning movie. combination. Yeah. And talking of winning combinations, Pixar and Disney are back with Cars Free. You will never be the racer you want to work. Will Lightning McQueen retire? I decide when I'm done. <laughs> So it seems that the Cars franchise is now going to have a return to form. Yeah, so the premise of this movie is Lightning McQueen crashes and he's getting older and he's having to deal with like the younger generation like snapping at his heels. And the younger generation is Army Hammer, who plays Jackson oh, I love, Storm. I love Army Hammer. Why? I just, he's just got a great name and he's just really handsome. Um, <laughs> I think you heard me. It's going to have that, that flavour that Pixar imbue into all of their movies, that where it appeals to, to adults and appeals to, to children, and particularly in this case, this, this is really one for, for the young children, and they get such a kick out of it. Um, but I think it's going to have that comedy and that pathos that Pixar have just managed to combine so well across all of their films. You are going the wrong way. You have crashed. Also this month, your favourite episodes of Paw Patrol as you've never seen them before in Mission Big Screen. Join a sold-out Maastricht audience as acclaimed violinist Andre Ryu performs in his hometown. And sexual tensions run high in Sofia Coppola's historical drama The Beguiled. To book tickets for all these wonderful blockbusters, head to myview.com. <laughs> <laughs>